name's Aidy Rudd. Um, we're here at Taronga Zoo. We have two nights here uh, tonight and tomorrow night. And um, we're just talking a little bit about the rolling gear. Building up inside old oh, great divine. I need this time with all my might. I will my Xavier came to us looking for a solution. He wanted good piano sounds but he also wanted a piano action to suit his style of playing. He was also looking to easily trigger long audio samples from the keyboard and some of them were playing from two to three minutes long. And these were either sounds of nature or long soundtrack style synth recordings from his album. Zay visited me here in my studio and after showing him what the Phantom can do, he decided it was the perfect fit. After talking to you that we would include the Phantom, because I could also use that as a keyboard, but also um, have the option of the pads to trigger sounds from. And the thing I loved about this was the way you could layer. We ended up splitting the regions and loading in some of the trippy samples that I made on a Moog grandmother. We loaded those into like the bottom half of the keyboard and I'm still able to be able to play piano sounds on, the, on this half of the keyboard. Um, when I remember when you told me that it kind of trigger went off in my brain, I was like, oh wow, there's a way to physically do that. I started out making a lot of sound organically with wooden bits and pieces, which I still do, but this rolling stuff has taken it next level. Well, these buttons here are triggering sounds. So that there, number one, is my son's um, heartbeat from when he was in the womb, and that's used as a percussion track in my record. So I can hit that, and then that'll loop. Um, and this one here is an intro to something that's on the record. Um, this one is, is uh, Red Tail Black Cockatoos. Uh, this one is Whales. This one is My Heartbeat. So yeah, Xavier and Aaron got in touch with me about how to reproduce these new album sounds live. And Xavier didn't want to be a slave to anything and, and even though it would have been really easy for him to just go out and bang out some songs to backing tracks, he didn't want to do that. It just wasn't interesting enough to him. So he had something much more exciting in mind. I wanted to be able to uh, advance on what I was doing with my analog percussion and be able to trigger some of the things that I've that I, I did on my record while playing drums and singing yeah well what's happening here is uh, when I first came aboard Zave had acoustic setup and then he had an SPD with a, a few triggers and that he wanted to incorporate a lot more kind of live feel and everything to these new tracks. So the early talks were about triggering some sounds for each song. And then I remember getting a call from Aaron during rehearsals and he was like, Xavier's using all the trigger ins and outs and he's got bar triggers and foot switches and stomp boxes, all of this stuff. And I was like, that's just awesome. I mean, the audience expectation and standard now for live sound is so high that artists expect the gear to allow them to dream up something wild and then make it work on stage every night. I first started out with a dig stand where I played percussion and digs at the same time. So this analog drum set up with the stomp box here was something I always used. And then as I added bird sounds to my kit, I wanted to be able to replicate those live. So that became triggering them from a brain, right? So we started to add a few pads. And then I got talking to you. <laughs> and then, so what I wanted to do was to be able to also create different drum sounds. Like I'll play the stomp box 4-4 thing with my left foot and my hats with my right 
having this digital option means I can go over to here, hats over here, and a traditional kick drum here, and be playing beats here. And amongst it, I can be triggering birds and bits and pieces. And I wanted to start to trigger some of those bass lines so I could drum with it and sing and create it live. So that's when I got talking to you and you sort of explained the TD50 and how we could do it. And then from there, it was kind of trial and error. We just kind of mucked around until, until we sort of, you know, at one point we maxed out the, the memory on the TD50. We realized the SPD has more memory. So we added that as well. Where we had the keys with its own thing and the TD50 and the SPD were their own thing. Now with the Ableton set up, it's kind of endless. We don't have memory problems anymore and we can press one button over there and everything changes. It's, it's, but it's, it's streamlined now to, to what, we, what, he's, what he's wanting. So there's album sounds in there as well as some of the standard V-drum um, instrument patches as well. But, and we've even messed with some of those just to give them a real, you know, almost like an 808, like a hip hop -y kind of sound. They're real crunched. EQ'd out, so get that really almost, you know, squash distorted sound sometimes. I care a lot about what I do, a lot about what I write, and, uh, and everything has meaning. I, I appreciate the opportunity that I have. Like, there's a lot of great musicians in the world that don't have the opportunities that I have. I'm, I'm lucky and because of that I really respect all the shows and I try and give my best and, um, and make it a, an experience for people rather than just a show. You know?